Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to help you walk you through the process of taking a data set and creating a trend line and then adding the equation and the R squared value for that trend line um, so that you can use this to make predictions. Okay, or we, we're looking for, you know, is there a relationship between the X and the Y coordinates that we have here? Does there seem to be some kind of cause effect relationship that exists that we can then, um, you know, exploit in, or, in order to make predictions about the future? So. What I have here is a table of data. You can see it doesn't look very good right now because it's not formatted to be able to be visible. Uh, one nice little trick is you can come up here to the top left corner and click and highlight every single cell. And if you double click in between A and B or between any two columns, could be between M and N, doesn't matter. I'll just prove it to you. Double click. And what it does is it'll take every single cell and it'll give it the appropriate width to show all of the text that's on the inside. Now, sometimes that's good, sometimes it's bad. Here it works pretty well. You can see here that I got things centered. I like how it looks. You know, you got some nice titles that are in blue up there with white text. That's great. You know, it's just something that if a kid turned this into me and said, here's my table, I would be like, that's a good looking table. So here we're going to stick with this. Now let's go through and let's add the, equa the, the chart, a scatter plot with a trend line that shows an equation and an R squared value. First step is this. Let's highlight what we want to graph. Notice I actually grabbed the titles as well and not just the numbers. That's nice because then it should, if I'm doing this correctly, should auto title everything. In Google Sheets, what you want to do is go up to insert and insert a chart. It'll think a little bit and it'll say, okay, here's what we recommend based on what you've highlighted. I don't like this. I didn't want a column chart. So I'm going to come over here to chart type and I'm just going to change it. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Most of what we do in our class is going to be scatter plots. So I'm going to create a scatter plot. Aha, there we go. Looks pretty good, right? Let's look and make sure that we have the independent and dependent variables correct. So as I go through here, uh, let's see here. The x coordinates, the independent variable goes all the way up past 45. On my chart, let's see, here's a 47. So that must be this. This is my independent variable, which is the estimated rainfall. That's the cause. And my dependent variable, the effect, is how much runoff we have. So that makes sense. The amount of rainfall that we have kind of drives the amount of runoff that we have. So I think our independent variables and dependent variable are correct. Um, so I'm going to go through here. I'm going to add this option. Let's say use row one as headers. That's interesting. It didn't do it. Why isn't it showing it? Should show then titles when you click on that. It should automatically show titles for. Um, hmm. All right. I don't. I can't explain that one right now. I don't know why it's not doing that. But uh, but we'll come over here. Let's at least add a chart title where we can say something like uh, annual runoff versus rainfall. IV versus DV. Oh, excuse me. Rainfall, rainfall versus runoff. So add a title, you can customize it, do all sorts of things. Um, next step, let's go under series and let's add in a uh, trend line. Aha, there it is, that's pretty simple. And we're gonna go ahead and go and, now if we wanted to change it, we have all sorts of options here, but this is obviously linear. That looks like it's a pretty linear setup that we got going on. Let's change the label to say we wanna use an equation. And let's also show the R squared value. So now we can see the coefficient of determination, which 0.922, that's a pretty good coefficient. That means that a lot of the effect of the runoff is driven by the amount of rainfall that we have. 92% of it is driven by the amount of rainfall. So pretty strong cause-effect relationship here. Okay. Um, again, man, I don't know why I'm not showing the titles here. Um, I don't get it. That seems like it should be pretty easy to do. Trait levels is text. Nope, I didn't want to do that. Let's reverse that. Oh, guys, I mean, I, I don't get it. I don't know why the, the title's not showing up down there. It should. Estimated rainfall, extend runoff, it's part of it. Well, we have what we need. Um, you know, it kind of bothers me. This is one of the things that Excel is better about because you have a little bit more options in, uh, in how to manipulate this to add chart titles and to do things like change units, things like that. Um, but for what you're looking for with your kids, this would be very, very good if they could give you something like this and then use this uh, equation that you have in front of you, the 0.618x, to actually, you know, do some math. Uh, at what point, you know, would I expect 35 inches of uh, of runoff or something like that? You know, can you take this data and, and work with it to make predictions? 
hopefully the the little video on where to click and how to get this helps and um and if you have you know any questions after watching this please do not hesitate to contact me or talk to the other people in your breakout group